This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the third lecture, and we've already dealt with. Um, we looked at relevant costs. Uh, we've looked at dealing with working capital, dealing with tax, and now we're going to bring everything in. And what you might call the third complication that can arise, inflation. So look if you would an example four with me. So a very quick read. Vent spills are considering buying a new machine in order to produce a new product. Uh, it'll cost 2.8 million, last three years, scrap value a million. We expect to produce 100,000 units of a new product, which will be sold for 20 per unit in the first year. We're given the cost per unit materials and labour. Ah, some inflation. Materials are going to inflate at 8%, labour at 5%. Fixed overheads amount to a million. Blah, 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 blah. The company expects to be able to increase the selling price by 7% a year. Uh, mention of working capital, and of course there's tax, capital allowances, tax rate 25%. There we go. Well, now we've got everything in the example. So let's work through it slowly, and as I go through, although we know how to deal with tax and working capital, let me explain the relevance and how we deal with uh, those mentions of inflation. Um, as before, I'll set it up in columns, which I think is the most efficient. It says it lasts for three years in the second line. So zero, one, two, three. Now I've left a bit of space because you'll remember from the last example that when tax is involved, we're quite likely to need another column. As before, we'll start off with the operating cash flows. And this time, they haven't told us the net operating cash flow. I said it's like the, um, the profit, but in cash terms. They haven't given it to us, but they have told us the information about the revenue and the costs, so we can do it ourselves. So let's do the revenue first of all. Uh, it says in the third sentence, we expect to produce 100,000 units a year, which will be sold for $20 a unit in the first year. So I don't think any problem there. 100,000 units, $20 will be what, 2 million. For heaven's sake in the exam, don't, you wouldn't be wrong, but don't work in millions. You'll have zeros all over the place. Again, unless you're told obviously differently, uh, work in thousands, and I'm going to work in thousands here. If that results in a bit of rounding, irrelevant. And so if I work in thousands, 100,000 at 20, the revenue in the first year will be 2,000. They're going to carry on selling 100,000 a year, but if you look, what is it, five lines from the bottom, it says we expect to be able to increase the selling price by 7% a year. So we'll still sell 100,000, but in the second year, surely the revenue is going to be 7% higher. And so we need to add on 7%. And surely the efficient way of adding on 7% is simply to multiply by 1.07. It'll be 2,000 plus 0 0.07, 7% of 2,000 which gives us a total of, um, I think it's 2140, but I'm not going to risk it. Ah, I should have done. Yes, 2140. And then it's going to carry on a, a, another 7% in the third year. So if I multiply that figure by 1.07, surely that adds on another 7% and gives me, I'm going to stick to the nearest thousand, so 2290. So be efficient, it's silly, you know. All right, it's 2000, you've added on 7% twice. 
but do be efficient. 2000 in year one, 1.07 to get the figure in year two. Multiply that by 1.07 to get the figure in year three. Uh, however, what about the um, operating costs? Below we've got materials. We know we're producing 100,000 units a year, and he says materials, $8. Well, of course, 100,000 at $8. Uh, would be 800,000. However, there's a, a difference in wording here, and it's important. With the revenue, it specifically said we would sell at 20 in the first year. So the actual receipt would be 2,000 in the first year. And then as the price goes up, we receive more. With materials, it says there's the cost at current prices. Now, although <coughs> when it comes to the exam, you just effectively use a rule to make sense of it. Appreciate we haven't yet bought the new machine. And so we're trying to estimate what the costs will be. So perhaps we've rung suppliers today before we've even bought the machine. And we found out that currently they're charging $8. But of course, we won't actually be buying materials until next year. And it says materials are inflating just below at 8% a year. And so although they're currently $8, in the first year, next year, when we actually buy them, the price will be higher by 8%. So we need to add on 8% or multiply by 1.08. So do be careful. If you're ever told uh, a cash flow at current prices, then automatically in one year's time it'll have inflated, in two years time another year's inflation and so on. So the actual cash flow at time one will be the 800 at current prices times 1.08 to add on 8%, the cash flow will be 864. And in a similar way to what happened with the uh, revenue, if it carries on inflating at 8% per year, uh, in year two, it will be 8% higher still, so multiply by uh, 1.08. And we'll get 864 times 1.08, 933. And I'm not going to keep writing it, I really shouldn't, all right, I will this time. Uh, if it carries on inflating, as you assume it would, then multiply by another 1.08 for the third year, brings it up to 1,008. So once you get into it, the problem is more one of time than difficulty. In a similar way, what about labour? Labour, $7 a unit, but again it's at current prices. And below it's inflating at 5% a year. So the actual cash flow in the first year, it's 100,000 at seven. But it was the current prices, so in a year's time, a year's inflation. Multiply by 1.05 to inflate. Uh, and the actual flow, 700 times 1.05 is 735. And this time I'm not going to keep writing, but each year thereafter, keep multiplying by 1.05 to add on 5% inflation. Any other operating flows? It does say below, fixed overheads currently amount to a million. It said uh, the accountants decided 20% of these should be absorbed into the new product. Well, I hope I've dealt with this enough times. 
Absorbing simply means charging for profit purposes. We're only interested if fixed overheads were actually going to increase by doing the project. And there's no mention of the total increasing. Charge it any way we like, the total presumably stays the same. So fixed overheads are not relevant. And so the net operating flow each year, 2000 minus 864 minus 735. At time one, it's 401. At time two, 435. At time three, 472. Ah. What next? Well, as I did say in the last lecture, two ways you can deal with tax. It doesn't matter, but I'll de deal, deal with it the way I did before. We'll work out, first of all, the tax on the operating flows, ignoring any capital allowances. So the rate of tax this time Near the bottom of the question is 25%. So 401 at time one, the tax at 25%, and keeping things to the nearest thousand is 100. Uh, and again, it does say it's one year in arrears. So time one profits, the tax of 100, will be payable one year later at time two. Second year's profit is 435, at 25% is 109, payable one year later at time three. And finally, 472, 25% is 118, one year later at time four. Uh, next, the capital flows. There's the original cost. Now remember, I'm working again in thousands, so it was 2.8 million, effectively an outflow of 2,800 at time zero. And is there any scrap? Yes, there is. Third line of the question. It'll last three years and then have a scrap value of a million. So at time three, an inflow of a thousand. So far, we've ignored capital allowances. So like before, we're going to have to calculate the tax saving on capital allowances. And for this, we are going to need workings. I'll leave plenty of space. I can go back and finish after. I explained the rules before, but let's give us a chance to have another check on them. The original cost was 2800. The first capital allowance. You're always given the rules and it says here 25% reducing balance. So 25% of 28 is 700, bringing the tax written down value to 21. I did say watch for three things. Firstly, Remember, it's the tax saving we're after. So allowances of 700 will save us tax at the tax rate of 25%. So the actual saving will be 175. When will we make that saving? Well, um, this was the first year allowance, the first year profit because of the delay. The first tax payable was at time two. The saving on allowances will occur at time two as well. So saving of 175. I said it'll be 25% each year, but because there's a different rule in the final year, how many years will we get allowances for? Oh, we got the machine for three years, we'll have three computations. 
That was the first. The second, carry on at 25% reducing balance. So 25% of 2,100 is 525, bringing the written down value down to 1575. But the tax saving, the tax rate here is 25, not 30, 25%. So the tax saving will be 131. One year later at time three. Carry on like that every year until the last. Well, the third year is the last year. And in the last year, remember, we simply subtract any scrap proceeds. And are there any sale proceeds? Yes, there are. The third line, there were a million. And so there's 575 remaining, we get this balancing allowance of 575. The saving will make as a result at the tax rate of 25% is 144, one year later than time four. So there we are, uh, 175, 131, 144, 175, 131, 144, tax saving allowances. Now I'd better mention, it may occur to some of you, uh, but don't worry about it. So if what I'm about to say muddles you, then ignore me. But in fact, in the first year, we made a profit of 401. The allowances are 700. And so, in fact, for tax purposes, they're making a loss in the first year. And you may be aware, um, if we make losses, then there are tax rules how to deal with losses. Well, we always ignore that problem. We assume, in fact, that the company is already making lots and lots of profit and paying lots and lots of tax. And so the fact this one project might lose money doesn't mean the company loses money. We assume it just means the company makes less profit. The company therefore pays less tax. This project in the first year has saved them tax. And that's what's happened. The overall tax, you see, we've got tax of uh, pay 100 but save 175. We're saving tax. It's no problem. Now, again, I only mentioned that in case it occurred to anybody. In the exam, we never consider tax losses. The rules I've given you, we apply them, whatever happens. All right, the only thing left is, are there, is there any working capital? Oh, oh, have I missed? Oh, yes, there is. Uh, I said before, always need working capital to the very end, because it's not tax, no tax effect. And four lines from the bottom, an additional 200 of working capital will be required at the start of the project. So at time zero, an outflow of 200. The project lasted three years. So at the end of three years at time three, an inflow of 200. And now we've got it. I can uh, add up and get the net cash flow each year and then discount in the normal way at 10%. And in fact, if you've been taking this down, it might be an idea if you just have a race with me. Because I shouldn't really need to be talking through this bit. Uh, but the net cash flow at time zero is 3,000. Outflow. At time one, an inflow of 401. At time two, 435 minus 100 plus 175 is 510. 
Uh, a time three, four, seven, two, minus one, zero, nine, plus a thousand, one, three, one, and two hundred. I think one, six, nine, four. I hope I'm right. If I'm wrong, sorry, there's an answer at the back, but I'm not going to waste time here. Um, and finally, a time four. 144 inflow, 118 outflow, a net inflow of 26. Now we can discount. Cost of capital is 10%. Where's my tables? And so the present values. And therefore, finally, the net present value. The inflow is 365, 421, 1272, 18, minus 3000. I get a net present value of minus 924. And so after all that work, the uh, fact that it's negative means that we would reject the project. And there we are. All right, well, we are virtually there. Um, and that's, that's most of the work you'll ever have to do on a straight discounted cash flow problem. Uh, I do need to speak just a little bit more about inflation. Not so much affecting what we've done. What we've done there is perfect. Uh, something that's perhaps a bit more theoretical, but um, I think it's very straightforward. But I'll save that till the final lecture on this chapter. Um, I hope that's clear how we deal with tax working capital inflation.